preparation before each hour. O my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the twenty-four hours in which, for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much, in your adorable body and in your most holy soul, unto death on the cross. O oh, please, give me help, grace, love, deep compassion and understanding of your sufferings, as I now meditate the fifth hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my will to meditate them, and I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O merciful Lord, my loving intention, and let it be beneficial for me and for all, as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplish what I wish to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O my Jesus, for calling me into union with you by means of prayer, and to please you more, I take your thoughts, your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, fusing all of myself in your will and in your love, and stretching out my arms to hug you, I place my head on your heart, and I begin. The fifth hour, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. First hour of agony in the garden of Gethsemane. My afflicted Jesus, I feel drawn to this garden as if by an electric current. I comprehend that you, powerful magnet of my wounded heart, are calling me, and I run, thinking to myself, what are these attractions of love that I feel within me? Ah, Maybe my persecuted Jesus is in a such a state of bitterness as to feel the need of my company, and I fly. But no, I feel horrified upon entering this garden. The darkness of the night, the intensity of the cold, the slow moving of the leaves which like feeble voices announce pains, sadness, and death for my sorrowful Jesus. The sweet glittering of the stars, which like crying eyes, are all intent on looking, reproach me for my ingratitude, and I, I tremble. tremble. Gropingly, I go in search of him, and I call him, Jesus, where are you? You call me, and you do not show yourself? You call me, and you hide? Everything is terror. Everything is fright and profound silence. But I prick up my ears, I hear a labored breath, and it is Jesus himself that I find. But what a dismayal change! No longer is he the sweet Jesus of the Eucharistic Supper, whose face shone with radiant and enrapturing beauty. But he is sad, of a mortal sadness, such as to disfigure his native beauty. He already agonizes, and I feel troubled in thinking that maybe I will no longer hear his voice, because he seems to be dying. So I cling to his feet, I become more brave, I draw near his arms, and I place my hand on his forehead, in order to sustain him, and softly I call him, Jesus, Jesus. And he stirred by my voice, looks at me and says, Child, are you here? I was waiting for you. This was the sadness which oppressed me the most, the total abandonment of all, and I was waiting for you, to let you be the spectator of my pains, and to let you drink together with me the chalice of bitterness, which in a little while my celestial Father will send me through the angel. We will sip from it together, because it will not be a chalice of comfort, but of intense bitterness, and I feel the need of a few loving souls who would drink at least a few drops of it. This is why I called you, that you may accept it, share with me the pains, and assure me 
that you will not leave me alone in such great abandonment. Ah, yes, my panting Jesus, we will drink together the chalice of your bitterness. We will suffer your pains, and I will never move from your side. And afflicted Jesus, assured by me, enters into mortal agony and suffers pains never before seen or understood. And, and I, I unable, unable to resist and, and wanting to compassionate him and relieve him, say to him, Tell me, why are you so sad, afflicted and alone in this garden in this night? This is the last night of your life on earth. I few hours are left for you to begin your passion. I thought I would find at least the celestial mama, the loving Magdalene, the faithful apostles, but instead I find you all alone, prey to a sadness which gives you a ruthless death without making you die. O oh, my good and my all, do you not answer me? Speak to me, but it seems you have no speech. So much is the sadness which oppresses you. But, O oh my Jesus, that gaze of yours, full of light, yes, but afflicted, and searching, such that it seems to be looking for help, your pale face, your lips parched with love, your divine person trembling from head to foot, your heart beating so intensely, and those heartbeats search for souls and cause you such labor that it seems that any moment now you are about to breathe your last. Everything tells me that you are alone, and therefore you want my company. Here I am, O oh Jesus, together with you, but I don't have the heart to see you cast on the ground. I take you in my arms, I press you to my heart. I want to count one by one your strainings and one by one the offenses which advance toward you in order to give you the relief for everything, reparation for everything, and to give you at least one act of my compassion for everything. But oh my Jesus, while I hold you in my arms, your sufferings increase. My life I feel fire flowing in your veins, and I feel your blood boiling, wanting to burst the veins to come out. Tell me, my love, what is it? I do not see scourges, nor thorns, nor nails, nor cross, yet, as I place my head upon your heart, I feel that cruel thorns pierce your head that ruthless scourges spare not even one smallest part inside and outside of your divine person, and that your hands are paralyzed and contorted more than by the nails. Tell me, my sweet good, who has so much power also in your interior as to torment you and make you suffer as many deaths for as many torments as he gives you? Ah, it seems that blessed Jesus opens his lips, faint and dying, and says to me, My child, do you want to know what it is that torments me more than the very executioners? Rather, those are nothing compared to this. It is the eternal love which wanting premacy in everything is making me suffer all at once and in the most intimate parts what the executioners will make me suffer little by little. Oh, my child, it is love which prevails in everything over me and within me. Love is nail for me. Love is scourge for me. Love is crown of thorns. Love is everything for me. Love is my perennial passion, while that of men it is in Love life. is perennial passion, while that of men is in time. O oh, my child, enter into my heart, come to be dissolved in my love, and only in my love will you comprehend how much I suffered and how much I love you, and you will learn to love me and to suffer only out of love. O oh, my Jesus, 
Since you call me into your heart to show me what love made you suffer, I enter into it. But as I enter, I see the portents of love, which crowns your head, not with material thorns, but with thorns of fire, which scourges you, not with lashes of ropes, but with lashes of fire, which crucifies you with nails, not made out of iron, but of fire. Everything is fire, which penetrates deep into your bones and into your very marrow, and distilling all of your most holy humanity into fire, it gives you mortal pains, certainly greater than the very passion, and prepares a bathe of love for all the souls who want to be washed of any stain and acquire the right of children of love. O oh, love without end, I feel like drawing back into such immensity of love, and I see that in order to enter into love and to comprehend it, I should be all love. O oh, my Jesus, I am not so, but since you want my company and you want me to enter into you, I pray you make me become all love. And so I supplicate you to crown my head and each one of my thoughts with the crown of love. I implore you, O oh Jesus, to scourge my soul, my body, my powers, my feelings, my desires, my affections, in sum, everything with the scourge of love, so that in everything I may be scourged and sealed by love. O oh, endless love! Let there be nothing in me which does not take life from love. O oh, Jesus, center of all loves, I beg you to nail my hands and my feet with the nails of love, so that completely nailed by love, love I may become, love I may comprehend, with love I may be clothed, with love I may be nourished and love may keep me completely nailed within you, so that nothing inside and outside of me may dare to divert me and take me away from love. O oh, Jesus!